Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming this evening. Um, the student teams have been working extremely hard all semester long, and this is kind of the event for them that they get to introduce their findings and you know tell the companies what they've worked on all semester. So we're, I know they're excited to give their presentations, and I think they're going to be. I hope you guys are looking forward to them, and I think they're going to be a very nice evening. So. Um, just to kind of go over, we, we'll start with Ray Green and then Lisa's Hart and Ken Your Child Spell. And then after that, we'll have a sort of brief uh, reception. And we have some rece refreshments in the back room. And then the individual teams, you know, if you'd like to talk to the company and give them any information, um, you're welcome to stay in this room or kind of we've got a couple other rooms that you can go to if you'd like to speak there. So. We do a quote every class, and um, you know it is good to have an end to, jour to journey toward, but it's the journey that matters in the end. And really, this class is about the journey. It's about all of the findings, all of the things that the students work towards and work towards learning about the companies and coming up with things that will be useful in the future. We ask the students what they learned this semester, and so I just wanted to kind of um, we talked about teams, and just a couple, I'm not going to read all of them, but just a couple that the students came up with. This team demanded true teamwork. It was important that we met consistently, so we were all on the same page. Different perspectives and outlooks played an integral role in the success of the project. Teamwork is extremely important in this because there is a lot of work to do, and um, it's important to be, you know, part of your team and to make sure that everybody is on the same page. There's also a tremendous amount of critical thinking. So it is extremely difficult to take a step back and see the big picture. And determining relevant information and integrating it all together was a very daunting task. And you'll see from the presentations that everybody did quite a good job at doing this. And uh, finally, we asked, you know, what was surprising about the class? What was kind of on, on you know, doing a real-world project, which is what this class is really all about. Um, one said, I'm glad that I was offered some real-world experience through this class. And one that we felt was really great is, I learned that I have a lot to learn. And this class really is all about learning. So, without further ado, I would like to introduce the student teams, because tonight is all about what they've done. So, uh, Ray McGreen, if you all would like to come up. I would also like to thank um, a number of people for coming tonight. Uh, Dr. Schwartz came and um, Professor Matt Aloni, and we have, of course, Gina Tedesco and I. Gina's been doing the Madison class, so uh, there's been a lot. And a professor of marketing, I'm sorry. Atamun, Dr. Atamun. Dr. Atamun, it's nice to have you here as thank well. You. So um, thank you very much. And Hello everyone, uh, first let, let me introduce our team. Uh, this is Atul, he, um, he has an MBA in MIS and uh, he has around three years experience in the field. And, and my friend Yatin, even um, he has an MBA in uh, MIS and uh, he has around two years experience in banking. And my name is Abhishek and even I am uh, graduating with an MBA finance and I have around uh, four years experience in the automotive field. And um, and our uh, client was Reva Green, and uh, we have we have said that Reva Green would assist for a greener a greener globe. Uh, so I just introduced. Uh, just a brief introduction about Reva Green. Reva Green is ba is uh, basically an offshoot of Reva Inc. And uh, Reva Inc. is basically into the into the construction industry, uh, uh, catering to the public and the private uh, private business. And um, Reva Green, uh, I mean, now basically they would like to enter into the green in industry, so this is where Reva Green comes comes into the picture. Now Reva Green would like to sell with their expertise with Reva Inc. 
uh, green construction related products to the federal and the state government. Okay, that, that is for it. And now what is the vision of, uh, uh, now the vision of Reva Green is to be, is to have a foothold in the northeastern region of the United States. And uh, they would offer a wide variety of products uh, related to, which are in environmental friendly, consistently meet or exceed customers' ex expectations, and they would also like to enter the commercial market in the, in the near future. Um, just to go back a bit, um, as of now, Reva Green would like to uh, sell their products only to the Fedlands and the state government because of Reva Inc's uh, expertise and also contacts with the federal and the state government. So that would be a better market for them. So uh, as I said, the mission is to sell to the federal and the state government employees and uh, with, their, with their expertise of Reva Inc, they would also like to install and uh, you know uh, give the maintenance services for the products which they offer. Next slide. Now, for all these things to be done, there needs to be a medium to do it. You know, to sell these products and services. This is where GSS schedule comes in into the picture. Now, GSS schedule stands for General Service Administration. It is basically a, a enterprise uh, made by the U.S. government. Way, way back in 1949. So these are basically long-term government contracts, uh, you know, for uh, for the suppliers. Now the benefits of these would be, uh, this is basically for the government employees to buy from this particular site. This is basically a site which would list all the all the different kind of products and their suppliers, and it would it would give Reva Green better uh, uh, better awareness about the companies and the products and then uh, they could you know customers could also buy with the help of credit card by on online payment and now uh, Yatin will uh, go forward <coughs> Atul will go forward to the competitive analysis uh, thanks Abhishek uh, these are the few list of uh, companies who are into GSS schedule and they uh, sell green construction products uh, but these companies have expertise in a particular green green product, and these will be the most uh, uh, they will these will be the competitors for Reva Green in various kind of products. Uh, we have a competitive ma competitive matrix over here where we have few parameters which uh, list some of the expertise and some of the certifications. These expertise and certification will be helpful for Reva Green to increase their business volume and to make the selling process to GSA schedule much easier. So uh, we can see a few other things uh, are with yes and star and few of the things are with yes and double star. So both of them are having a different uh, meaning over here. So yes star means they will be inheriting those, uh, uh, those competency from their parent company Reva Inc. And yes, double star means that we are recommending some of the suggestions. We are recommending few things to uh, Reva Green so that they can uh, they can help Reva Green to uh, make the uh, selling process easier. Uh, the objective of Reva Green is to sell green construction product through uh, GSA schedule, and uh, along with the selling of GSA schedule, the the installation and maintenance service will also come along. The customer value preparation will be uh, like it will be a one one stop shop for Reva Green to sell their green construction product, and um, it will be much more easier for the target customer to go through GSS schedule and buy their product online. And they will be also providing a complete installation and maintenance service along with the uh, product sale. <coughs> Some of the activities that will be really helpful uh, to deliver a uh, customer value proposition includes uh, hiring of full-time and part-time employees. Uh, these employees will be uh, these employees will be having lead certification or expertise in quality control or uh, marketing research and other fields. Uh, uh, Reva Green already have Reva Inc already have a good reputation reputation with uh, federal and state government agencies. So Reva Inc can help uh, will help Reva Green to in to uh, make their brand image. Uh, 
the the block the rectangular block so shows the business uh, core business unit of Reva Green that will carry out most of the operations that will include uh, financial operations, marketing operations, and a uh, few other operations. So main input to this core business unit will come from uh, customers who will be federal and state government employees, and uh, they will see Reva Green as as one stop shop for the construction products as it will be selling a wide range of products to, uh, to federal and state government. Uh, in addition to that, there will be a service, uh, service thing that will, pro that will be provided by Reva Green as the inst uh, they will be providing uh, maintenance and installation services to, uh, to customers such as federal and state government and their employees. Now Yatin will come up and explain marketing plan. Thanks, Atul. Uh, good evening, everyone. Now, marketing to the government is a little different from marketing uh, to the commercial customers. So on the basis of that, we have come up with a few marketing techniques that Reva Green would make use of. One is uh, uh, trade fairs and local government events. Now, uh, we came across a lot of website which provides information about uh, a number of events that government participates in uh, during the year. So Reva Green could uh, participate in a few of these events in order to uh, make the government aware about their products, about their services. Uh, they could also make use of professional service uh, providing agencies who have better networking with the government and thereby improve their relation with the government. <coughs> they could make use of advertising, uh, they could uh, promote their product, product to, uh, through the business journals uh, as well as uh, various government publications, government executive is one of them. Uh, again, conference sponsorship and panel participation is another strategy. Uh, they could make their website uh, more government friendly, they could make use of uh, a smart pay option which is available on the GSA website. They could also have that uh, option available on their own website which uh, makes it more convenient for government employees to purchase products through their website. Uh, and they could also make use of direct marketing and press release announcements. <clears throat> now recommendations as uh, Abhishek and Atul have already mentioned, uh, one is uh, to get on the GSA schedule. Uh, uh, they could uh, sell their products with high demand for that. Uh, again, uh, getting professional certifications like the LEED certifications would also be a great advantage for the company. Uh, they could also make uh, use of Web 2.0, which is basically promoting their product through social networking sites like Facebook, like LinkedIn, where uh, they could uh, make their presence felt and they could come in contact with a lot of uh, customers. Uh, now, according uh, to the industry analysis, uh, this market is expected to grow at the rate of around 6% per annum. And uh, it's already a billion dollar industry. By 2010, it is expected uh, to reach around 20.5 billion. Uh, now, according to our research, on the basis of uh, the growth rate as well as the expected market, we came up with a list of around 13 products that uh, the company could sell uh, uh, right, right now, currently. We also considered uh, the price for the pr product. We made sure that uh, uh, the prices would be reasonable. Except for composite door, uh, the price is a bit on the higher side. But then when we look at the growth rate, the growth rate for that particular product is also very high. And it's in, uh, in, in good demand right now. So this is the list of products that we have uh, for the company based on our research. That's it. Thank you. Any questions? Um, a couple of very great, great presentation. And you uh, summarized your, I'm sure there's a lot of work that went behind that, and sometimes it's hard to really tell how much went into that, particularly uh, the competitive matrix. I like that. A um, couple of comments. Uh, what, I guess the one thing is uh, you, you, when you say hire full time, part time employees. Uh, I'm going to assume that in your financials you've specified how yes, many. We yes, yes, we have it. What's well, just roughly? How about we talking five employees? Five, yes. five over over what period of time? Uh, over three to four years. That's because uh, because we have basically made a financial projection for three years. Yeah. So, three years. So uh, oh. we have kept that constant at least. And the budget for the the marketing is that a you have a marketing plan which is very comprehensive. Uh, looks like it's going to cost a little, a little money. Uh, for the marketing. For the marketing. Mm -hmm. but what seems to me is, that, but if it's a GSA schedule, can you really influence that schedule that much with the marketing? Uh, 
I don't know. I, I don't sell, I've never sold to the government, and I, I never even heard the GSA schedule until right. the midterm review you folks did. That was uh, new to me. Is that? I just wonder. If, uh, basically, I mean, uh, those would basically help in the long run. Yeah. You know, because because they would obviously would want to enter the commercial industry. So apart from, I mean, keeping GSA schedule aside, mm -hmm. uh, those would certainly help them. I mean, being in the networking side is no harm. So the, I, without you know, looking at by the, I'm a, the investment or the expenses associated with the marketing and the, and the new employees, right. you feel you can justify that with increased revenue? Yeah, over a period of time, I think over three to four years. Okay. Yes. Three to four years, yeah. What about, but now when you looked at the competitors, were you able to tell what they do in terms of marketing? Uh, did you have them, because I noticed, the one thing I noticed that they you had them, they, they do selling. Yeah, they and, do selling, yeah. yeah. And they have their weakness and, and, and strength. Yeah. Maybe some of the some of the companies will be just selling the products and they won't be into installation and maintenance and stuff. And some of them will be just giving the maintenance and installation services for various products. So they have their different expertise. And nobody really does it all? Uh, no, no, we haven't we found. We didn't find them. And they do have the separate website on their own, to which you know, they they have their own news letters as well. The other news letters, yes. Yeah. So if you subscribe to them, then you can get it. Very good. Good job. Tesh, do you have any questions or any comments? Um, <laughs> I know the product analysis you guys done. Um, is, is there something that have you guys researched those parks already being sold to the government or government purchasing those products or any, or you guys picked up from just a basic market survey? Yeah, we, we took those product lists from the on two bases. First, like what is the growth rate for those products and how much big market it will become after after say like one year or two year or like something like that. Right. So. Any uh, any particular? Uh, I know you list product. I didn't have a chance to read them yet, but I'll, I'll read the analysis, detail analysis later. I'll probably come up with a couple questions. But uh, the, uh, I I think GSA schedule will work uh, the way it's presented. Uh, you know, it, it definitely will help us because I've seen a tremendous growth in that, and we're we're actually tomorrow we'll be in there submitting our GSA schedule. This will be the right time for me to take a look at it and make, make use out of it. Actually, actually, there is a, there is a uh, government agency who suggests uh, federal and state employ uh, state agencies what kind of product they should go for, and uh, we got a comprehensive list from there. But that was a big list. So what we did, we coupled that that suggestion with the market growth and uh, the growth growth rate of the of the products so we took uh, the suggestions from that that government agency and the product uh, and the growth rate of the of that product so that way we consolidated that the product list we also spoke to a few people in the industry and they also suggested that uh, you know where to look for those products and what are the products that you can choose so, okay thank you Thank you I'm going to take you through a brief introduction of our team and our company, Lisa's Heart. Uh, Alina, uh, who has a strong healthcare background, and she's an entrepreneur and a business owner, and also has a corporate executive experience. So, Pasna has a strong marketing background with 
consistent work experience in market research and she was also an entrepreneur and has undertaken international business assignments. And me, I have a, a consistent work experience in finance as well as customer relation and marketing. So we all are, are from a different background and we have tried to concentrate on all the major aspects of the firm in the frame of business strategy and plan of action. Uh, going forward, uh, I'll talk about Lisa's Heart, the, like a small introduction. Uh, Lisa's Heart is a registered non-profit uh, 501c3 charitable organization uh, founded in 2005 and incorporated in 2007, uh, which is located in Watching, uh, New Jersey, and it's committed to build a self-sustaining financial <coughs> resource to fund pediatric cancer research. Uh, it also has, it's not written over there, I'm just telling you, it also has a medical advisory board uh, of pediatric oncologists who will select the appropriate medical research projects uh, focused on pediatric cancers to receive the funding. Uh, about the vision of the uh, vision of Lisa's heart uh, is to become a self-sustaining financial resource to fund pediatric cancer research and to empower kids to help other kids uh, by raising money for support of ongoing research project. Uh, about company's value proposition, uh, two things is that the donors get an opportunity to contribute and support ongoing uh, pediatric cancer research and increase the awareness about this devastating childhood disease. And also, uh, the company says that kids, kids involved in fight against kids cancer campaign can be promoted as a unique approach to fundraising. And this whole thing can easily form into a mantra that says that kids fight and kids cancer. And I'll hand it over to Pastor. I will give a brief background about the market research and donor dancing that we did. According to the current trends, American giving reached a record high in 2007, with donations totaling about 3.314 billion. Due to the economic recession, as we all know, giving has since dropped by 2% to about 308 billion in 2008. 86% of the wealthy donors said they were mostly motivated to give by the notion of meeting critical needs. And 83% said that giving back to society is motivational. People, as we know, people and companies <coughs> are going to be donating more focus in this economy because they have limited funds. According to analysis of the psychological need that a customer is fulfilling by donating, we understand that people donate if they believe in the mission, they trust in the leadership, and they get an opportunity to be personally involved. We also posted a customer survey for which we had 45 respondents, and the key insight that we got from there was that parents were more, parents were more inclined to donate to charities in which their kids were personally involved. So they were able to relate to the organization, and uh, that helped try to create awareness for Lisa's heart. And now I'm going to give you a brief uh, outline about the target markets. As such, I think the New Jersey state uh, is the target market. We're looking at the individual donors, the corporations, and foundations in the New Jersey, New Jersey state area. But to narrow it down a little bit, I think we can focus on the parents of the middle and high school students in Watchung, New Jersey. That would be the immediate target market. And their demographic uh, profile is they are about 30 to 64 years. They are middle class to upper middle class. According to your research, there are also 150 corporations in the Wachang area which have a corporate social responsibility program which we can look at uh, targeting. There are also about four to five high schools in the Wachang area which we can use for fundraising activities. The family and the social networks of the board members have been consistent in terms of being, uh, uh, improving our donations. And now the marketing plan. The key focus of our marketing plan is to be able to increase the donor base. And that's why it is to identify and attract prospective donors. The key uh, aspects that we're looking at is website development. We understand Lisa's Heart already has an operational website, but we're suggesting to uh, probably get um, a volunteer website developer who can update the website on a periodic basis. He can talk about the previous activities that you've undertaken and the success of those activities, post pictures and try to garner attention. And so therefore there's high relatability. And also to create a buzz about the upcoming activities. So therefore to have a volunteer web developer who can update these activities would definitely help in marketing his part in the watch on the area. 
And of course, social networking sites, this is very, very cost effective in terms of creating a fan page in uh, Facebook or Twitter. And this, uh, this fan page can have online events and activities which creates a lot of promotion and uh, has a lot of fans who can, and also uh, probably a customer forum where all donors can talk about what they feel about these stars, how I can improve or uh, what they like about their these stars. We're also suggesting to create a unique product, product uh, in partnership with our uh, chocolatier, uh, a heart-shaped chocolate candy to symbolize Lisa's heart, purpose of uh, raising money and awareness for pediatric cancer research. Now I'll pass it over to Elena to talk about the business strategy. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make a small mention regarding the area. We, we chose Wachang only because we thought that's a, a nucleus where most of uh, the board members live in that area, but the um, uh, the strategy can be implemented in the whole Morris, Morris County, maybe, or you know, other areas in the neighborhood. So, the primary objective of the business strategy would be growth. Um, we would like to increase the donor contributions by 25 percent per year um, for the next three years, and. By doing that, that would subsequently increase the awarded amount. Um, also, at the end of the third year, uh, after three years, obviously, uh, we would like to build a healthy cash balance of about $75,000. And uh, like I said before, we try to keep these numbers very realistic and, and, and so that they can be achieved. Uh, some of the strategic goals that, uh, that we thought about was um, for Lisa's Heart should seek and make contact with corporations and institutions whose products and services are aligned with their mission, like, uh, for example, um, pharmaceutical companies who, um, who produce cancer drugs, like Novartis, or large um, children's hospitals, like St. Jude. I know they have their own um, charity, but, uh, you know, a connection with them would not be a bad thing. Um, also, um, in the same line, um, would be good to uh, to form a corporate council uh, and get these corporations that that we build partnerships with directly involved. Um, if, if representatives from those corporations would be on the council and would participate uh, or personally involved. Another goal would be to seek endorsements and accreditations from large reputable charitable organizations that share the vision, like the American Cancer Society or the Childhood Leukemia Foundation. Um, endorsements and accreditations from such companies is very beneficial uh, in, in, um, in getting donors to donate. Um, should seek and partner with celebrity spokespersons um, to advance their cause and attract publicity, thus reaching a large audience of potential donors. Um, you know, uh, one suggestion would be there's a bookstore in, in Ridgewood that we know of that have signing events, constant signing events. So that would be a very good partnership that, that could be that would reach large audiences and, and uh, make good spokespersons and authors and poet writers and things like that, or celebrities. Um, and develop a corporation partnership and strategic alliances by partnering with different other companies. Um, companies that produce different high quality products that they could sell on, on Lisa's Hearts website and donate part of the, uh, or make a 15% donation, or things like that. Um, also, I'm going back a little bit to um, the marketing suggestion about the um, chocolate, and the heart-shaped chocolate. Um, the idea behind that is that the partnership created with the uh, chocolatier that would create that and sell that, that that particular business partner would donate 50% of the after-tax profits from selling those chocolates. And they can be used in PTA events, they can be used in all, all of the, your fundraising events um, as a symbol. And, you know, plus comes with a 50% donation. 
donations from the um, corporate partner. Um, also, one other thing that I want to add to this slide, it's not there, but I wanted to add that it is very important as a business goal for Lisa's Heart to show efficiency in the use of donated money and, and allow total transparency. That is very important from a donor's perspective. Um, we have come up with a, a plan of action to try to achieve those goals. Um, A good start would be to secure working capital. And um, we thought that between sixty and hundred thousand uh, dollars would be a good start. Uh, that could be either from a loan from a bank um, or as individual investments from the uh, board members um, as a loan to the company paying an interest uh, current market rate at six percent. Uh, the payment should start immediately. Um, on the, the payments on the loan should start immediately and uh, if everything goes well and we see 25% growth every year, um, this loan could be at least partially paid at the end of the third year um, and probably fully paid off um, at the end of five years. We, we calculated in our financial uh, projections a 10 year amortized at 6% and that's those are the monthly payments that we incorporated in our financial projection that's what you will see we'll see there um, you need to hire one full-time employee paid between 13 and 15 dollars an hour uh, who will be responsible who will do the legwork uh, you need somebody smart somebody young and enthusiastic to do the legwork to contact schools recruit volunteers plan, organize, and follow up um, on all the fundraising activities, um, m most of the small ones. Um, I think this would be a very important step and very, um, very useful step in, in the growth in our plan of action. Um, the job, uh, the, the, this, the, this particular employee, the job description, uh, I, we outlined it there. Um, they would work, or he or she would work off the road, so would need a cell phone um, or a Blackberry to follow. Um, they would need to be reimbursed for miles and gas and tolls. Um, but their goals should be 10 to 15 fundraising uh, activities per month um, that could, could get between $500 and $600 per event uh, money raised. Um, so that should be the goal for this employee uh, and if, if this employee would make the right connections in the right schools and, and the communities, this could be in between car washes and bake sales and uh, other things like that, uh, this employee could bring some money in. Um, the, other, um, plan, uh, the, uh, the other action step would be to create an internship position for a college marketing major. Um, this uh, this intern would basically be the full-time full employee's uh, assistant. They would help uh, with updating the website, with creating and, and managing the uh, fan page. Um, they would uh, help with marketing, new marketing, finding new marketing strategies, and um, and follow up on the events. Um, we thought that. In absence of an executive director, uh, each board, uh, board member should volunteer one full day a week and, um, and do, um, do all sorts of things. Um, one of the biggest strengths that Lisa's Heart has are the board members. Uh, they are very dedicated, hardworking, and highly educated people. And I think that each one of them can, can bring a lot a lot to the table by developing corporate partnerships, recruiting celebrities for spokesperson, um, securing uh, and managing the capitals, uh, the expenses, obtaining endorsements, applying for the accreditation. I understand the application process for accreditation uh, is quite a difficult one. And um, so all of those things um, could be achieved uh, if, if 
and you know it's it's something that that can be done immediately and cheaply right now. Um, we need to solicit an, an experienced volunteer to be the acting executive director and work from home for the first year. Um, once the company has achieved a 25% growth after the first year, and then there is an operating budget, the executive director should become a paid employee. I don't know what happened to our slide there, but um, uh, that's what should have been there. Um, a competitive salary for an executive director in the nonprofit would be between seventy-five and eighty thousand dollars. But I think that if you can find um, a retired executive, uh, they may be persuaded to work for less, or maybe it's not a, a full-time position and they work for less. Uh, so in our financial projections, we use. Uh, no salary for the first year because that would be a volunteer and the second year we use 50,000 and third year we use 60,000 as a salary. Um, this, once this position is created, uh, it will bring with it the need for an office space uh, with all the expenses that that brings. So we included those expenses uh, into our financial projections starting the second year. These are some suggestions for fundraising plan. Uh, we think the gala event, which was in the past a major event for, for Lisa's Heart, should be continued. Um, uh, you need to find a creative and attractive theme every year. Um, invitations should be sent to at least 300 people um, with follow-up, so at least 200 people will respond and participate. Uh, the ticket price should be around $80, $80 a ticket, um, between $80 and $100. And then the expenses should actually be kept at less than 25%. That is a type of that. Uh, then there, there are some smaller events that, that we, um, we think you should do, um, family events. Um, Elegant, smaller events like wine and cheese tasting at a board member's home with chocolate tasting organized by kids. Um, events organized by kids, book poetry reading and tea and cookies. Um, and then the bake sales and flower sales and uh, yard sales and sporting events and things like that. Um, in conclusion, we, uh, we are optimistic for the near future because uh, even in a bad economy, people will always support a cause they believe in. Uh, and we feel that there are a lot of people um, that, while they are unemployed now and looking for a job, would donate some of their time um, to a charity to support a good cause. Uh, most people are, after all, naturally kind-hearted. And um, it, you just need someone to send the message and tell the story. That's basically what it is. So thank you for, for your attention. Any questions? Did you, did you have a question? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Deborah Hurley Grant's work walked in during the presentation, so. Yeah, um, thank you. I want to just um, thank Nina, first of all, for inviting me to participate in this exercise. Um, my name is Deborah Hurley. I have my own event planning fundraising firm. And uh, and I fundraise solely for non for profit So I think, because my dean was like, oh, ask a question. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, first of all, I commend you for putting this together. Actually, um, well, I'm sorry if I was late, a little late, but what I gather, I understand you have a mission statement, things like that, and here's the conclusion. Uh, I understand that there are people here that are already invested in this, which is excellent. Um, my only, and what you have put together, by the way, is something an executive director coming in would do, by the way. The only thing, there's some, there's some big gaps and questions for, meaning, um, you know, how do you plan to execute? Like, how do you plan to secure those individuals to come to the table to be your counsel or to be your board? Um, that was kind of there. Have you thought the of that? The board exists. The board exists. The board exists. But you always have to continue to build a new board. So do you have a, um, I guess I should say, a, a plan for the board? Like, does the board have a clear direction 
um, of classes. Usually you have a class set up, so you know, because everybody gets burnt out. So that's my, th that's where I'm going. People get burnt out. So, um, you know, things to consider. Maybe not necessarily a question, but things to consider when you um, are tweaking your plan here. Um, just fast forwarding to your fundraising plan. Um, did you put, I saw that you put projections, but did you do breakdowns so that your, the people you're presenting to, um, did you have specific projections? Yes, and the How financial uh, projections, everything is they, breaking down. They presented yes. and everything. Is that bad? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. So that, I mean, that's what I would um, really, since I didn't see that, the fundraising plan, actually, actually seeing how do you plan to get your 300 people and what it takes to get 300 people to purchase X amount of tickets, and um, also talk about sponsorship opportunities and how that would work and what would be the exercise to do that. I mean, um, we're in the middle of actually, I'm working with a not-for-profit now that we are in need of securing $200,000 literally in three months. How are we to do that? And how we plan to cast that net, wide net to approach donors to literally and give them incentives to get in Five thousand at a time, and things like that. So um, I guess I'm just making, just giving some statement versus some question. How about that? That's not fun. Or you can ask any question. Ask any question. <laughs> well, I'm, there's going to be an informal. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you can um, chat with them after. Um, yeah. Are there any other questions? We didn't know in the plan. I mean, it's, I bet there's a lot more yes. detail yes. to it too. Because yeah. my question, kind of along, I'm Lisa's mom, and. Um, how do you get that 25% growth? Um, you know, because our experience is we have our loyal core and it hasn't grown beyond that, and that's our kind of stuck place. So we're hoping to address those kind of details, the motivated and unmotivated board members. You know, we're hoping that um, addresses that, um, that aspect of things. Well, there are projections, in, you know, the financial projections uh, address uh, that. Uh, as far as the growth, um, we feel that by hiring a full-time employee and and getting a volunteer executive director and between that and, and the more involvement of, of the board members, um, the the, uh, the new the new uh, you know the, the money the new money coming in should grow because of more exposure. Well, one of the numbers that jumped off the page was the 150 corporations nearby. I mean, that, just, uh, yeah. that was a big number. And that was just, I, I was curious what area. Oh, it was also Morristown, and also it was uh, smaller corporations as well. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was as say. in also stores, uh, whom they can um, have alliances with in terms of creating a chocolate product. It just or, seemed like that's a big. Big opportunity that I'm not sure you, anybody's thought of before. Yes, but and, uh, it's a small, mid size to yeah. large size, so they can only do accounts. So there is a network that they can. And you, have, you, how much information do you have on that? Uh, uh, we do have some information, but it is all open to. Uh, it can we can easily find out. Well, there, were you able to identify? Uh, I know you mentioned there are there's plenty of competition for the for donations, but they, what about the specific you know, um, kids with cancer? Are there other other uh, nonprofits that compete for the same in the same area? Yes, yes we have a chart of the direct and indirect competitors, which we did incorporate into our presentation. But we have that. We have uh, Alex Lemonade Stand. We have a Kristen's Ray of Rainbow of Hope. So we have all of that, and we have also created a table of what are their strengths and what are these are strengths and how they can look and improve themselves. Maybe even partner with some of them. Yeah, definitely, yes. Well, we had that as one of the goals. Or at least or see what they're doing that's successful, but <laughs> you can copy. Thank you, listen as competitors. We try to benchmark with them. Good. Okay, great. I, I have a question. Um, I, I think that if your slogan or the logo for the company, I don't know whether that's something that the team is suggesting, um, but I really liked it, you know, kids fighting kids' cancer. Yeah, we, we came up with that. You came up with that. I just 
love that because I think that young people today, I have two teenagers and they're extremely philanthropic, you know, and their peers are extremely philanthropic. Um, and they relate to, as we all do, to an individual story. That story is a very powerful one in this particular case. And if you, you can by all means target by segmenting, you know, corporations versus the community and then the kids. Um, I would want to see, even before a full-time person is uh, appointed, a way in which the kids who currently participate are used as a council of youth who recommend on a strategy for social networking. There's a because youth board. On. We do, oh, yeah, we do. do have a part of it. There is a youth board that's mm -hmm. part of it. So they really need to put together a social media strategy for the company. I don't know that they've done that. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they are very, very good without even thinking that they're marketing. They market. And they really need to be tapped because they're the heart of this organization. Um, and so we have to figure out, I, I'm sorry to mean to interrupt, but uh, to really make the best use of their time. Okay. And, and, and to link it into some of the things that they do, you know, um, to make um, the schools that you're targeting a home that grounds the organization. Um, I know at my son's public high school, the kids actually have a list of organizations that they select, and they will then work on a, you know, however regular basis. They do a fundraising for that during Spirit Week, for example. They will raise twenty, thirty thousand dollars in a week just by doing things at the school, and they then decide which charitable organization will get the donation. Um, so, you know, I think you, you are very lucky that you already have that kind of grounding in this particular community, the youth. But I think they almost <coughs> need to be empowered to tell you how to tap that. And that links in with your social networking ideas. We're looking at uh, your hiring intern uh, for that, but since you have a new board, that is the best use of resources. Are there any other questions and comments from uh, from Lisa Stark? Thank you. Very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming tonight. And uh, tonight, uh, our uh, PQ consulting group are doing the uh, presentation uh, for Kendra Charlesdale. And this is the table of comment uh, we will deliver tonight. First, we will, uh, we will have the introduction and methodology and industry and strategy and analysis. And we will have key funding and key recommendations and we have summary. For the introduction, uh, BKV Consulting uh, Group. B is my, uh, my major is MBA Finance and Q is G and he studied MBA management and E is Esther, she is uh, MBA marketing. And we also uh, deliver the best quality uh, to the entrepreneurs. Introduction, can you try spell? And our version, um, our version is to uh, make uh, can you try a spell uh, national successful in the United States? And our mission, um, our mission is to provide uh, spelling bee competition uh, that benefit children, parents, and franchise. And our mantra is every child can spell. Let's do logic. And this is a chart uh, talking about. Um, Parents, um, uh, we do in our uh, business model through franchise model, and this, and we also had the uh, two customer uh, service. The first part is parent, 
and this is uh, the survey about the end users and we also have another part which include uh, teacher PDA and PTOs and learning center this is the survey for the franchise is and we also the, uh, do the uh, financial analysis for the uh, revenue um, and cost and we have two financial statements uh, one is for can you try spell and another is for uh, franchise <coughs> and we also do the break even analysis for our franchise model um, in order in order to uh, achieve the national spelling bee franchise objective uh, we build a strategy and we create the uh, test uh, the tactics based on the strategy and then uh, after that uh, we have the action plan and next we will achieve our Esther will do more detail in the industry. Good evening everyone, thank you Ben. And we're going to examine the industry and do um, and explain to you all how we went about achieving this strategy for this. Um, first of all, we just want to establish that Can Your Child Spell, it was a very interesting model that was created. Um, it's a it's a unique model because there are only there are very few uh, spelling bee competitions in the United States altogether. But what we discovered was that can your child spell is actually a three part model. One, it's a franchise. It's also an educational service, and it also is an academic competition. As a result, we found that we found that the major industry players are academic competitions and educational franchises. One that stood out to us the most was Kumon. Kumon is located in New Jersey. Um, they were established in 1958 and in 1986 they began the process of creating franchises. Um, we've been looking at Kumon and we found that they've had tremendous results. Um, we'll move on now to the second part of our industry and strategy analysis industry data that we thought was printed in. Uh, currently in the children's education franchise industry there are over 160 franchisers in that specific industry. Um, the number of franchise units in that industry group alone eight, over 8,000. Um, the average number of franchise units 86 and the average franchise fee interestingly enough is $27,000 per franchise. Uh, the average total investment is over $350,000 and the ongoing royalty, royalty fee is 5.8%. This will uh, be relevant a little bit later on. We looked at franchise industry trends in the United States and in the year 2000, uh, close to 4,500 franchise, franchise businesses were um, noted to be in existence and in the year 2004 that went up to 55 just over 5500 franchises and that was as of 2004 it's five years later so we do believe that it is close to if not close uh, if not at the 7000 franchise uh, unit mark at this time uh, we saw that this uh, amounted to a 27 percent increase in franchises and 7% annual growth. This growth will continue over the next two decades. The note about the children five years and under, that is the next group of children that will be our target market. Um, our target market is children between the ages of 8 to 14 and we expect that the age, that age group of five years and under will be our next target market and that this group will increase by 3.4% over the next two decades. At this time, Chi will begin with the key findings. Good evening, everyone. Uh, let's see what we found. Uh, as we mentioned before, uh, our industry is among uh, academic campus industry, uh, franchise industry, and uh, as a uh, uh, education service industry. So our business, uh, the companies uh, use the uh, uh, franchise based model. We try to reach our end users, which is children between whose age between uh, 8 and 14, uh, through the franchise. 
So that's why end users will be the children uh, and the target customer for for us will be sponsors and franchises. For the franchises, we target on um, PTO, PTA learning <coughs> centers, and teachers. The reason we choose teachers, PTOs, or, P, uh, or PTAs, and the learning centers is that uh, they have great resources as to reach the children, so that's why we choose them as a uh, target uh, franchisees. Here's key, uh, key uh, recommendations here. First one is the business strategy. Our objective is that became a national spelling bee franchises. For doing that, uh, we will hold uh, four regional spelling bee contests, which is Northeast, Southeast, Central, West, and the national contest. We will first target on Northeast in the United States. The reason is that our company is located in New Jersey and it's easy to start up. We do the same strategy uh, when, we, uh, when we extend to other regions. Here is the dish for the promotion plan and dist uh, distribution plan. First, let's see the promotion uh, plan for the end users. The first one is free ranking contest for every student whose age between 8 and 14. Uh, the reason is that we want to uh, provide a platform to every student to join the spelling bee. And that's the big, the big difference uh, from our, uh, one of our uh, competitors, which is Scripps. Because, you know, Scripps is something like, it's only for like talent student. But our company, for every student, that's made with our mentor, every child can spell. Uh, second one is uh, uh, the, uh, st uh, the stationary uh, logo uh, with our companies. The reason we do that is this is for uh, this is for every student who registered from us join the uh, oral contest, and uh, just uh, encourage uh, more students to join the uh, oral contest. There. The third one is uh, cashback referral promotion. Uh, this means that if a registered student introduce a new student to join. Uh, to join the spelling bee contest, both of them can get uh, cash back. For example, if the regi re registration fee is fifty dollars, and uh, one registered student introduce a new student to join our uh, to join the spelling bee contest, both of them can get five dollars cash back to each other. And the maximum uh, and the maximum for each student is uh, forty five dollars. The reason we're doing that is that it makes sense that students, if they can introduce more students to join the spending bee, they can just pay $5 for as a registration fee. And another reason that they just introduce uh, their friends to join the contest, have fun with their friends during the contest. Here is the distribution uh, plan for the franchisees. Uh, to reach our franchisees, uh, we first we select state and counties, and then we will go through the board of education to reach, uh, to reach the franchisees. Because the franchisees include uh, three parts. One is uh, learning centers, one is uh, uh, PTA or PTO, and the other is uh, teachers. For the PTO or PTA and learning centers, we will contact with the uh, board of education to get the information uh, of, the, uh, of the PTA or PTO and the learning centers to reach them. And for teachers, uh, we uh, we do like we we'll use the uh, teachers communicate website like weareteachers.com uh, to reach uh, to reach uh, teachers as our uh, franchises. Uh, here is uh, uh, the distribution model: uh, can child spell uh, through the uh, franchises to reach the end user children to to reach uh, to, to reach the children. <coughs> the reason we involve the other agencies is that these other agencies could be our franchises in the future because they don't want in the middle. Here is key recommendations for the financial plan. Uh, where are our revenue from? Three parts. One is uh, uh, children, which is registration fee. The other one, uh, uh, second one is. Uh, uh, franchises fee and uh, the third one is uh, sponsors. Let's see the registration fee first. 
uh, we place a uh, rest fee is fifty dollars. Reason is that uh, considering our uh, considering our uh, competitor uh, scrapes, uh, their rest fee is ninety uh, ninety eight dollars per year, and uh, our company we have like two contests uh, per year, so that's why we choose fifty dollars. Another reason is that according to the customer survey, we found that uh, most parents uh, would like to pay uh, fifty dollars as a uh, registration fee. Uh, let's see how this works. Uh, students, there's two ways uh, the students can register from us. One is directly register from the franchisees. They just pay like fifty dollars <coughs> to franchisees, and franchisees will keep thirty dollars, and twenty dollars will go to the company. The other way is students register from other agency, which is also like fifty dollars. Then the, uh, the other agency keep ten dollars. They pay forty to franchisees. Franchisees pay us twenty dollars, and they keep twenty dollars by themselves. This is franchisees fee. We choose one thousand as our franchisees. The reason is that this is the uh, uh, competitors, some competitors in the uh, children educational franchise industry, and uh, as we mentioned before, uh, our main competitor is Kumo, because we use the same strategy. We try to increase the number of the franchises, uh, not the we didn't uh, not the franchise field itself. So that's why we choose one thousand, which is seen as our competitor Kumo. The third part for the uh, revenue is sponsors. Uh, we have two types of sponsors. One is the corporate sponsor. This sponsor have we have this is kind of like title sponsor. For example, if like McDonald, uh, they are uh, they are our, like uh, corporate sponsor in Northeast. So the spelling bee name gonna be changed like McDonald Northeast Valley Bee Contest. Uh, there is like a number for uh, each, uh, each region. So for the, uh, for the regional level, there's only one sponsor per, uh, per region and one national sponsor uh, level. Here is the second tab on uh, sponsor, which is uh, our premium uh, sponsor. This sponsor is under the corporate sponsor and there is no limit number for these sponsors. Well, the most better. Uh, Esther, we talk about the action plan. Thank you, Chief. Okay. At this time, we're going to just examine the action plan. And the first thing that we recommend for Kenya Child Spell is to register as a franchise. Um, the first, the what you must do is, is file a financial disclosure document with the Federal Trade Commission. Um, without that, you're not really able to go forward. It would involve uh, audited statements, financial records, um, you know, board of management um, information along that line. And then the other, the other part of it, which is the, the meat of it, which our team worked very hard on, is the uh, selection process per county. Because our model is a national model, um, it seems great in scope, but it's a three-year plan that we're, we're um, implementing here. What we're going to do is first choose by state. Choosing by state would involve the income level, um, which is easy to find through national census, census statistics, very easy to find. And then once we choose the state, we choose the county. How do we choose the county? We do that by figuring out which is the county with the most dense population. Um, of children in that target market being ages 8 to 14. So for example, let's say we were to choose New Jersey as um, the state that we Kenya Child Spell will operate in, and we decided to choose Bergen County as our target county. Bergen County happens to be the 53rd largest county in the United States overall. Um, also Bergen County happens to be the, the largest um, county in the state of New Jersey. In addition to that, um, there are nine in, in, the, in the state of, in the county, Bergen County, there are 900,000 residents in Bergen County alone. Of those 900,000 residents, 100,000 are children between the ages of 8 to 14. So you're looking at a target market of children ages 8 to 14 
um, that are already established and it's just a matter of going in. The, in order to target these children within this market, we can do a number of things. We would start off with meetings, of course, um, not one by one, but we can network through the online community called Teachers Pay Teachers. Teachers Pay Teachers is a great uh, community and it's, it's a captive market. You look, we're targeting teachers that have an entrepreneurial streak already. We're not targeting teachers that do not have uh, or, or do not desire to pursue a business, um, a business proposition. Um, in method two, um, it's selection by school. Again, we're choosing state. So we've chosen the state being uh, by income level and by uh, the, the population of that state. And selection by school would be the top 10 or 20 academically ranked schools in the state of New Jersey. And then we will choose the county accordingly. Okay. Um, let's see. We are now going to move on to a summary. And in summary, we just want to say that we believe that Can Your Child Spell has tremendous regional and national expansion possibilities. It is a sustainable business model. Uh, the CEO, Rahul Walia, has said that he wants it to be something used as a grassroots approach that it can be funneled through from the ground up. And so we believe it's a sustainable business model for that reason. Um, there's a very strong customer value proposition. That means everyone wins. The children have the platform where they can compete twice a year, not just once a year, as with scripts. Also, parents find this a quality after school program. And uh, as a franchise model, it makes money. A clear competitive advantage, the first one being two competitions instead of one per year, which is what Scripps has. Um, another competitive advantage is that the community is involved. It's not just where there's a final winner, a $40,000 prize, and then what happens with all this money? Where does this money go? Which is the situ with, not the situation, but the account of Scripps. But with us, we know where the money is going. The, the, if it's a $50 registration fee, $30 goes to the master franchisee being, whether it's a teacher, whether that master franchisee is the learning center, whether that master franchisee is the PTA. So it's a great place that PTAs can use it as a fundraiser and leverage that. Um, it's very simple, it's people driven, uh, and it's a great franchise model. Effective marketing and promotion follow-up. Um, there can be uh, community initiatives, um, initiatives with other um, groups, whether it's partnerships with uh, companies or office supply companies like Staples, online discounts that can be done, uh, teacher promotions sponsored by Can Your Child Spell. And because it's a grassroots approach, we anticipate immediate results. And that's our presentation tonight. Questions? Yeah. questions. I just had a quick question about the survey results. Where were these surveys taken? Um, I thought you're providing us with, with yeah, it's not providing the results uh, with uh, the business plan as a candidate. It's within the business plan actually. But where, where did you take these surveys? We we targeted teachers, we targeted parents, and learning centers, whether employees are or managers of learning centers. Okay. It was an online survey that okay. was done through Civil Monkey. I think you guys covered mostly everything, so it's, it's looking forward to seeing your, your complete plan now. Um. Trying to get a feel for, um, you know, I know, I know you do three-year projections, but how big do you think this could be? If they're, you know, if they execute all your strategies plus other things that they come up with is can this be a national, and how long will that take? Yeah, um, it's, it's going to take like three years, and we plan that uh, in, this, in the third year, we, we're going to have like 800 franchises nationally. 800? Yeah. In the business plan that we'll be getting, do you have a 
I know you talked about uh, the selection, the, po the population demographic and all of that, but in the business plan, do you have the major uh, states listed that has, yes. again, yes. Yes. you have that? Yes, yes. yes. also in the uh, appendix. Yes. Wonderful. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions from the audience? Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to all of our teams for presenting tonight and for all their hard work over the course of the semester. Um, and for the companies for coming and for working with them. And for everyone who came to see me. Did you want to say two words? Um, I do, actually. Um, to all of the companies represented here, thank you so much for making a donation. We really appreciate that. Um, unfortunately, we are also subject to the realities of life. But, um, some of the um, aspects of running this program actually require funding. And um, we are trying to run the program as a business, as we should run it, because we practice that in the classroom, and we really should, or we preach that, we should practice that as well. Um, so thank you ever so much for that. The second thing is, um, we'd love to work with you if you have internship needs. Um, you know, we have both undergrads and grad students. Um, we're always looking for good opportunities for our students. So in the event that you wish to do that, contact me and um, I can, uh, or through um, Professor um, Barrett Green, or Green Barrett, oh, sorry, <laughs> um, we can um, provide you with the information about how that works. It's very structured, um, but I think most companies who make use of that opportunity um, really get very good value from us. Uh, and then finally, thank you for the opportunity that you've provided the students. And tell their friends about oh, the program. Oh, yes, and <laughs> spread the word. Make it viral. We want more companies um, to approach us. Um, the program runs every fall and spring. And, um, on both campuses. On both campuses, so. Professor Tedesco and Professor um, Green Barrett are currently of revamping for the spring after a much needed break. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and for those students in class, you know, I cannot thank you enough. You have a powerful network. Let me tell you that. Uh, I know that. So please use that network and persuade other students to take this class. Every st single student except for the human resource management and management uh, concentration students in the MBA can take this class instead of the simulated capstone class. Believe me, you learn more from this class than the other because you're actually going out and working with real companies. So please be our advocates because we are a very small program as Professor Tedesco says, we're the gifted and talented program <laughs> in the College of Business. And we like it like that because you really do get a lot of personal time from um, both the professors but also the businesses. So, um, so thank you. So thank you all for coming. We have some